In light of the most recent teachers' protests for more pay, I want to talk about the reality of why teachers don't get paid more. Hi, how's it going everyone? My name is Hank and welcome back to the channel. So first things first, I personally absolutely believe that teachers should get paid more. Education is the foundation for advancement in society and teachers simply don't get paid enough for the amount of work that they put in for teaching their students. But with that being said, here's the harsh reality. Your income is directly related to how many people you serve and how well you serve them. Let me say that again, your income is directly related to how many people you serve and how well you serve them. This is the same idea of magnitude and scale in the book The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. So magnitude relates to how much value you provide a person and scale relates to how many people you actually affect. Let's say if you have a product or service and you are making 100 people's lives better and they each give you $10 in return you'll be $1,000 richer. Let's say if you serve 100,000 people and they each still give you $10 each, and you'll be $1 million richer. And that is pretty much how scale works. Knowing all of that, how do you make more money? So you can either serve the 100 people better so each of them give you more money, or you can serve more people. If you are somehow able to serve an infinite number of people, you theoretically can make an infinite amount of money. Obviously easier said than done. Let's say if you are a server at a restaurant, you can serve maybe 50 people a night. Your service is capped by how many people that actually show up at the restaurant, how fast the kitchen is working and how fast people eat, etc., etc. You would have a cap on the amount that you can actually earn because you have a cap on the amount of people that you can realistically serve within a set time period. This is the problem with doing an hourly shift because you are pretty much limited by your physical capabilities. Now let's say you are an owner of a big company, you work the same 8 hour a day as a restaurant server, but your business may affect tens and thousands of people and each one of them pays you a certain amount. In this situation, you'll end up earning thousands of tens of thousands more than your average restaurant server because you are affecting a much larger pool of people. So is the business owner actually working tens and thousands of times harder than the server? I mean, I hardly doubt it. You cannot physically work a thousand times harder than someone else. But the business owner is definitely affecting significantly more people than the restaurant server Therefore, they earn much more as a consequence. Now let's go back to the uh, example with the teachers. So how much influence do you think a teacher actually has? And who are they actually influencing? So for a normal school teacher, maybe affecting 30 students in a classroom. Maybe they're teaching a room of primary or high school students that pretty much have no money to offer. Now imagine if they are teaching a room of CEOs on how to make money in their business. So how different would the situation be? When you say that teachers don't earn that much, you are essentially saying that teachers that teach a small group of people that don't have money to pay them don't earn that much. It's definitely not that all teachers don't earn that much. Now think about if you are a consultant for some major companies, if you are consulting or teaching 30 company CEOs, consultancy fees can easily be up to tens of thousands of dollars. And you're definitely not going to be underpaid if you are actually teaching someone that can really afford to pay you. This is not to say that teaching kids is something that's not important, but the importance of teaching and early education is not that easy to quantify. Therefore, it's actually really hard to figure out how much more they should actually get paid. So what does all of this mean for you? Now, in order to increase your earning potential, you need to either provide tons of value to a select few customers or significantly increase the number of people that you serve. If you follow this line of thinking, you may start to think of ways to increase your personal income. This is where I think New Zealand is at a relative disadvantage because of the relative small population of the country. So if you want to earn more, you probably have to expand overseas if you run a business. And many of the most successful New Zealand companies do end up doing just that. For example, Rocket Lab. So let me know what your ideas are on how to earn more, whether in your current job or maybe starting a business. And I will see you guys next time.